Hi everybody, this is Shane R. Monroe, and today we might have found the ultimate solution for a wireless keyboard and mouse for the Valve Steam Deck. Stick around. So the Steam Deck subreddits are alive with people looking for a solution for a very portable, fully functioned Bluetooth keyboard and mouse to take with their Steam Deck on the go to use at a computer while they're staying at a hotel or whatever. There's a million and one reasons why you might want a mouse and or keyboard for your Steam Deck. So let's take a look at what I found is probably my perfect solution. I already had one of these and I sort of forgot about it because I was using it mostly for Android tablets. But the Logitech K600 keyboard may just be the answer, the ultimate answer actually, to the Steam Deck's needs. And let's talk about why that might be. First off, um, there are many, many Bluetooth keyboards kicking around that uh, will do the job, but what they don't have is an integrated mouse. They also aren't designed for what I would consider couch surfing. So if you're at a hotel, you're probably sitting on the bed, watching the TV, you got your Steam Deck connected to it, and what you really want is sort of an extended uh, an extended keyboard or controller to use on your TV. So what really makes this nice is it was designed for actually for smart TVs. And it will actually connect directly to Samsung, LG, and a couple of other smart TVs. But we're not going to talk about the smart TV connectivity today. Instead, we're going to talk about the layout, the functionality, and why it works well with the deck. So the number one complaint that I would have right out of the gate is... These sort of flat type keyboards, they're almost like chiclet keyboards. I've never been a super fan of them. They're great for entering a password or doing some you know, minor work, but if you really wanted to sit down and write an article on the go, are chiclet keyboards the answer for you? Now, I'm assured that if you give this type of keyboard enough time that you will adapt to it and you will become proficient at it. I never quite got there, but that doesn't mean that it's not usable and it is pretty much a full size. That's another nice thing is you don't have to worry about trying to scrunch your fingers together because there's a lot of little Bluetooth keyboards out there that are really attractive. They're really small and they would look really cute with the deck, but the problem is, is <clears throat> they're very difficult to type on. And so the idea of having a keyboard is you want it to be comfortable. So from a size perspective, if you, if you are chiclet friendly, I guess you could call it, then this keyboard will cause you no qualms there. But one of the things I do want to show you is over here we have two mouse buttons. You also have Android buttons over here. So if you connect this to an Android device, you automatically have enhanced Android features, which is cool. Um, and then uh, you have a mouse buttons over here left and right mouse button, and over here you have a trackpad to be your mouse. So what's kind of nice about this, and I know it's kind of hard to see, but you can hold this almost like a controller, and you have your fingers over here to do your mouse clicking, and your thumb over here to do your track padding. Is that even a word? It is now. So you can literally use this like almost like a big controller, and it's extraordinarily comfortable for doing that. So if you're spending a lot of time running around file managers or in the desktop mode of the Steam Deck, and you use a lot of mouse, this is, this is a great, great solution for you. The other neat thing is it has a trackpad up here. And this is really nice because it acts sort of as a, as a basic controller function. So this is really made for smart TVs, but how great is this for, say, the Steam OS interface? Uh, what other interesting features on here? So um, from a physical standpoint, that's pretty much all we got going on here. Listen, it's a keyboard, it's a trackpad, and it's got buttons on it. Um, so if we look at the backside of the unit, there's really nothing unremarkable here. There's a couple things I do want to show you. There's an on-off switch at the top. But in reality, it's a Bluetooth keyboard. It just happens to be a remarkably well ergonomically designed one. So couple of other factors we want to talk about before I plug it in and show you how it works. Uh, there is a battery compartment on the back, and I have a reset code here uh, on this. And I'll, I'll hold this up because many Bothans died to bring me this code. Essentially, this code is to reset the entire keyboard. Oddly enough, it's very difficult to find this code. Um, and so in order to take away all the pairings, you may have to do that. Now it's hard to get this thing open. I can't believe I got it open as easy as I did the first time. There's also a unifying um, dongle, the Logitech unifying controller dongle that comes with it. So if you plug this in, 
the keyboard just pairs up to it, right? For the most part. So you use this on a PC. I, I'm not going to use it on the Steam Deck because I think the beauty of, you'll need a hub for this, right? Or you'll need an adapter to plug this into the top. I don't, I don't think that's what anybody watching this video is really looking for, but it does have the receiver and it does work really, really well on a PC. You'll also notice that it's powered by two AAA batteries. Now, I'm on, of two minds of the subject of AAA batteries or battery powered portable devices as a whole. One, it's really easy if it goes dead to just pop in some new batteries, provided you brought batteries with you or provided that, well, a number of different things, right? So that's great if you happen to be somewhere where you have batteries and you manage to pack batteries. If you did not pack batteries, there's no plug in here anywhere. You're not powering this any other way. You either have extra batteries or you do not have extra batteries. Now, if you're like me and you travel a lot with um, battery packs, power banks, whatever you want to call them, I've got probably three or four of them on every single trip that I make. Can't use it on here. That to me is a big negative of this keyboard. I have to power it with batteries. Now, according to the website, you'll get 12, you'll get 12 months of use with two AAA batteries. I've never actually sat down and done the math, but I'm, let's cut it in half and just assume that they're lying, right? Let's assume Logitech is lying out of their teeth and you're really only going to get six months out of two batteries. That might be okay. I really do like the idea though of being able to just plug in my portable devices to whatever power bank I happen to have with me and just use it that way. And you can usually use them while they're charging. So a lot of people don't like, they like the batteries because they can just pop in new ones and it works right away. And most devices, when you plug them in, they take time to charge before they work again. So it really depends on what side of the fence you fall on. The fact that the battery life is so long and so good in here, it may not be a problem, but reviewing this keyboard, I have to absolutely positively tell you that um, that is a potential situation. The other nice thing is this will connect to three different devices, not at the same time, but easily switchable using the number keys. So essentially you turn it on, hold down one of these buttons, and pair, it goes into Bluetooth pairing mode, and you pair whatever you want to it. Your phone, your tablet, Steam Deck, right? So that's great. So you can literally use this with every device you brought with you, not just the Steam Deck. So that's kind of cool too. So really there's not much else to say about the device other than we need to, of course, plug it in and see how well it works. And um, again, listen, it's a keyboard and mouse, so I'm gonna plug it in, you're gonna see that it works and we're gonna call it a day. So let's do that now, and uh, we'll finish up this video, and I'll give you my final thoughts at the end. All right, and so here we are in desktop mode, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead, I've already paired this up, of course, right? So I'm gonna go ahead, it's already turned on too, I'm just gonna hit the space bar or something, and uh, I'm gonna wake it up. Maybe I don't have it turned on, I don't. Okay, first of all, I gotta apologize for the glare. It's, it's bad, and you know, that's one of the things I sort of kick myself for not getting the 512 gigabyte unit is because, uh, yeah, this can be, um, this glare can be really bad for shooting videos. I'm doing the best that I can with what I've got. So I've already paired this up. We're gonna go through the pairing process again. I'm just gonna turn it on with the switch. You see that the light comes on saying that it's connected to device two, and there we go. I got a nice, clean little mouse. All right, so I can do whatever I need to do. Okay, so it works nice. It's, so for a travel from one end to the other, right, so you gotta kinda look at it. So you get about a third of the screen per full, well, no, I guess it depends on how fast you flick it, right? There's, so there's some, so there's some interpretation in there as to how fast it goes. If you go slowly, it's about a third of the screen. If you go quickly, you can get most of the screen. So that's kind of nice. It's adaptive, and I like that. It may take a little bit of getting used to it if you're not used to it, though. Obviously, I'm not used to it. The other nice thing, too, is unlike the trackpad, clicking in is a click. So if I go here and I push in, it's a click. That's really cool. If I do two fingers, it's a right click. I don't know if I can actually right click that or not. Let me see. Can I right click break? There you go. So you get your context menu. So that's really cool. The fact that I don't need to use these buttons at all and just use the trackpad in a way that like every device on the planet has ever used a trackpad before, which is single tap, two finger tap, two finger drag, that all works. If I were to go to Brave, my browser, and um, I go to some website, let's just go to Amazon. I think I was looking at this exact keyboard here. 
right? So you can use two fingers to drag just like you would expect to do with any other trackpad. And frankly to me, I mean, the fact that this works exactly like every other trackpad, yeah, listen, you could use this trackpad, but how do I, I can't, can I two finger scroll? You can't do any of that. So you've got you to adapt specifically to the device. In this case, the device is adapting to what you're already used to, and I love that. So let's go ahead and return to gaming side. Now we could, we could do pairing stuff over here, but I wanted to really show, um, did I actually click that or not? I think I did, okay, great. So I really wanted to show pairing from the game OS side as well. I'll let this thing reboot over to the gaming side. Doo -doo. All right, so now we're on the gaming side and here's the D-pad just as I promised you. It works fantastic. I mean, this is, this keyboard is very intuitive. It works exactly the way that I want it to work, which is humongous to me. All right, so let's go ahead and see how you pair this guy up because it's really, really simple. Go to your menu, go to settings, go to Bluetooth, and you'll see I've already got it paired. So let's go ahead and forget the device, much to my detriment. All right, so now you'll see that it's no, it doesn't see it just yet. So if I hold down two, until the light comes on and starts blinking. You can see it furiously blinking right there. We just go ahead and pair it up. It just doesn't get any easier than that. And now we're good. That's it. I mean, there's not much else to tell other than the fact that this is a fantastic keyboard. It's not super cheap. I'm gonna tell you right now, it's not gonna be the cheapest option you're gonna find. But if what you want is an all-in-one keyboard mouse solution with D-pad, with all of the functionality that you expect from a trackpad and a keyboard, I can honestly say I don't think there's a better solution out there. So the Logitech K600, do I recommend it? You betcha. I do not think you are going to find a better companion for your Steam Deck than this. If you do, please leave a comment down below and tell us what you think might be a better solution or what solution worked personally for you. After all, these sorts of things are sort of subjective and my needs may not be the same as yours, but I can tell you that this little guy has been absolutely amazing to work with with the Steam Deck. I'm getting used to the chiclets. It's gonna take a little while, but I think I can make it do. As always, thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, hit the bell. You guys already know what to do. We appreciate every single sub. Those of you who've been leaving comments, I try to answer every single comment. I try to give you guys what you want on this channel. And right now what you're telling me is you want Steam Deck stuff. So do I. More Steam Deck videos are coming your way. I'm Shane Armonroe, and as always, thanks so much for watching. Take care.